What people refer to as styrofoam is usually expanded polystyrene foam. Many think it can't be recycled, but it can. And that's likely because less than 1% of it gets recycled, even though we make enough to fill more than 700 Empire State Buildings every year. And now one company has found a way to turn all this trash into treasure, or rather, photo frames. But why are more companies doing this? We went to Mexico City to find out. New materials, countless in their numbers and variety, have been created. Styrofoam is actually a brand developed by the Dow Chemical Company and now owned by DuPont. It only refers to a kind of plastic used in construction and insulation. There's actually no such thing as a styrofoam cup. Instead, it's expanded polystyrene foam that is a kind of plastic scientists first created in the 1940s. Today, it's estimated that this kind of foam takes up about 30% of the world's landfills. A company called Renweva has found a way to make money recycling this cheap product. Corporations pay Renweva to handle their polystyrene waste, and regular people can drop off their own at the company's facility. It also hosts collection efforts, like this one at a local university. All told, Hector and his team handle 16 metric tons of plastic per week. I think the biggest challenge was that there was no information about it. In fact, I couldn't find a book that said a book for making machines for recycling of polystyrene. And the biggest challenge was to find the process that would allow it to be standardized as well, right? Workers first grind the material to make it easier to manage. Then they apply heat and pressure in a process called densification, which squeezes out excess air, leaving reusable plastic behind. In terms of size, the ratio of pre-densified foam to post-densified foam is about 90 to 1. A machine heats the material and molds it into these spaghetti-looking strips. The company uses a chemical that's a bit like antifreeze to cool the strips, and finally a machine dices them into rice-sized pellets. Renueva sells these pellets to companies like Marcos y Marcos, which turns them into frames. The process is actually pretty similar to Renueva's. You heat the pellets, mold them, and then assemble and decorate the frames accordingly. Hay marcos que requieres 45 vasitos de unicel para hacer un marco tamaño carta. Entonces, realmente se aprovecha bastante bien. This factory can process six tons of raw material per day and has actually recycled some of its own old frames. Different companies use Renueva's pellets to make heels for shoes and to make more foam. Renueva is working on making plates and cutlery, but first it needs to make sure the recycled plastic is safe for food. That's because polystyrene foam could pose some health risks. Scientists have found that foam containers are generally safe to eat off of but some chemicals can transfer into your food or drink, and they can be harmful over a long period of time. And breathing in foam particulates is dangerous. The International Agency for Research on Cancer says one of the main components of polystyrene is a probable carcinogen, though the EPA hasn't classified it as such. Hector and his team are realistic. They know this kind of plastic isn't going anywhere soon. So their solution to waste relies on a circular economy, reduce trash by reusing it. The problem with many plastics is the lack of the union of bonds between fabricants, distributors, users and recyclers. Most recycling facilities don't handle polystyrene foam, and as a result, many people simply throw the product away. Renueva has outreach programs to let people know the product can be recycled. ¿Cómo los involucramos? A través de pláticas, a través de capacitaciones, a través de educación ambiental y empezamos a ir a escuelas, a dar conferencias. The company says that it now recycles 5% of the polystyrene foam used in Mexico City. But we were unable to independently verify that fact. Pues lo que queremos es que la gente esté educada para que todos sepan que el material se recicla y más que eso, que todos tengan esta conciencia de que si lo utilizas, tienes que hacerte cargo de lo que utilizas. Renueva has recycled 1,200 metric tons of foam since its founding in 2014, a small fraction of the amount produced worldwide every year. That helps explain why everyone isn't copying the Renueva model. Most polystyrene products are cheap, in part because more than 90% of them is just air. It makes them very light, but also means you need a lot to make recycling profitable. 
They're also often covered in food waste and can break apart really easily, which makes them tough to process. There are a few similar facilities that run on the Renueva model, like this one in China. Or the Canadian company StyroGo, which uses mobile trucks to densify polystyrene foam on site. But many people around the world are pushing to simply end the use of foam rather than figure out how to recycle it. The European Union, China, Costa Rica, and U.S. states like New York and Colorado have all announced or implemented bans on single-use plastics like polystyrene foam. Mexico City banned single-use plastics starting in 2021, but that doesn't include polystyrene foam. So the product is everywhere, and it fuels the Central de Abasto, one of Mexico City's largest wholesale food markets. Descargamos un camión o dos camiones al día de este producto de Unicel. Food vendors like Irene depend on that product's low price. Los vasos, todo, todo es mucho más económico. El biodegradable se disparan los precios. That's why plastic bans don't always have the intended effects. Al contrario, hay un impacto ambiental un poco eh, grave porque este impacto lo que hace es que la ley no va enfocada al consumo, va enfocada a la sustitución de la mercancía. Cuando tú sustituyes una mercancía es ya no consumo plástico, pero ahora consumo papel. The supports run Wave's main idea that single-use plastic should be recycled. According to Hector, the solution to all the plastic sitting in our landfills is to use the plastic sitting in our landfills. And any environmental action that doesn't make economic sense isn't realistic. No se habla de desarrollo sustentable en muchas políticas públicas o, o temas de este estilo porque solo se enfocan al medio ambiente, pero dejan desprotegida a la sociedad y a la economía. Y la realidad es que pues no podemos nadar contra la corriente de salirnos de un esquema económico. <laughs> 